There's a group of youngins that are here to take a tour of the Goshen set in Utah. What they don't know is I'm going to turn up. Let's go! Amani and Josephine from BBC. As we walk into Jerusalem. We got this set going. Oh, yeah. Wow. wow. <laughs> we are at the wow. game. So unlike a normal set that they'll put up for the shoot and they'll take down, this set was built in such a way that it could withstand the elements. Wow. Oh my gosh. Mind blown. Over here, this is where we have the parties. Oh, you know what's cool. going on? We have parties down here. How much did this crib cost? Oh my gosh, you don't even want to know. It cost an arm and a leg. There's storage all through this wall here. There's a pottery closet, a rope closet, you know, a, a closet for almost everything that we need here on the set. Wow. This set will be used whenever we're shooting kind of the Jerusalem part mm. of the story. And then in Texas, we've got the villages and the campsites. So this would be uh, our version of the Pool of Bethesda. So this fills with water. We can also put a platform over the top of it Brilliant. and turn this into a courtyard. How's it going? Good. How you doing? Can we get a picture? This is like your yes. this is like your second home, right? Second. <laughs> How's it going? Chris. Yeah. Jonathan. Nice to meet ben. you, Jonathan. Ben. Nice to meet you. And I'm a hugger, sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a hugger. Stevie. Stevie. Have you a chance to hug you? Wow. Yeah, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Nice to meet you. I'm a hugger, too. <laughs> Damn, now I feel like I should have hugged you. That's what I'm saying. We're, we, we just we missed out on the hug. Want to hug? Yes. Bring it in. Bring it in. Uh, bring it in. So uh, we just thought it'd be fun to maybe have a conversation, me and all of you back in Provo, and talk about your thoughts and experiences. And yeah. How yeah. you feel? Would you guys be up for that? Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, yeah, I, I, I went off. Oh, I don't know. I'm I think uh, my flight's going to be. <laughs> All, right, well, <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Gen Z group talk scene, take one, Mark. So we just talk? <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Um, yeah, I figured I'd just tell you a little bit about me and my journey and how I got here. Uh, when I moved out to Los Angeles, it was essentially to take acting full time. And so um, I now no longer had a support system for my, my income. The bills kept coming and the breaks didn't. I was actually, I was, my checking account was overdraft like a hundred bucks and I had $20 in my pocket. The only thing I could think to do in that moment was to get on my knees and pray. And there was silence. There was nothing. So, you know what? I'm going to use your words from the Bible, the words that you said, come to me all who are weary and heavy laden, burdened, and I shall give you rest. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So you know what, Jesus? Take some of mine. I'm out, man. I surrender. And I opened my mailbox, and in the mailbox were four checks. I covered all my bills that were coming due. At that point, I realized that the moment I surrendered and let go, what I thought my life and my career should look like and give it to God, he's like, now you're ready for me to do what I'm going to do with you. Three months later, Dallas Jenkins called me and said, you want to do this series? I said, I think so. For me, seeing people profoundly and deeply impacted and in many ways healed, to me, it's like, okay, man, this is where I'm at. This is what I'm supposed to do. So that's a little bit about me. I imagine you guys must have some questions. 
for such a long time, like religion and Jesus was something that was used to like make me hate myself or like to harm me. Um, so I really appreciated how like kind you portrayed Jesus. It's gotten me to to seek um, Christ at an even deeper level. Being able to accept people at their lowest and when they've done things that, that seem unforgivable, like those are the things that I think regardless of your faith can really help people. I thought it was like a well-made show. You did, you did good, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I really feel like it restored my belief that God is good. I found a deep relationship, sorry. <laughs> it's um, okay. With the Lord I never had before. And I was, I think it's silly because it's like, oh, a TV show did that, right? But it gave me the nudge. Growing up, I didn't really have much faith. Um, I did a lot of research on Buddhism, Egyptian culture. Um, so I ended up choosing to believe in many gods. I refuse to believe that there's just one higher power out there. Um, I like to believe that everybody deserves a chance to believe in anything that they want to. Um, that being said, you know, it took a while um, and I'm constantly saying, you know, God is good. You know, God bless, blessings. Then why don't you, can I ask you a question? Why don't you say that gods are good? I'm back and forth with it. Um, back and forth meaning the, the phrase or the, the phrase. idea of one versus many? I would say back and forth with one versus many, if I am to be honest. And, you know, watching The Chosen helped me, you know, open up a little bit more and, and get a better understanding of who Jesus was. God is calling you. He wants to know you on a deeper level. And so that hug that you're feeling, that's Christ trying to get to know you. That's what that is. So you've got nothing to lose to explore. And as you get closer and closer, you'll know what's true. But I think he's calling you. And I just felt I should share that with you. Thank you. I'll pray for you. Thank you. You guys have been so awesome. So open and um, vulnerable and so uh... The interaction between me and Jonathan definitely felt like Jesus or God or God was speaking to me through him. Come here, brother. Yes, he plays a character, but he does it in a sense where you can tell that that character is part of him. And so for, to have him acknowledge me for, you know, my efforts, and he doesn't even know me like that, that was a surreal moment. And that's why, you know, I couldn't hold back the tears. I couldn't, uh, I let them flow. And it was one of those moments that I will truthfully cherish for the rest of my life.